thank y'all so much for joining for this Q and A. Um, we're doing this asynchronously, so uh, I'm going to speak uh, as if it is uh, right after the film has finished, because everyone will have probably just finished seeing the film when they tune in for this Q and A. And uh, man, uh, before you actors got on, I was speaking to these other two unsavory gentlemen about uh, how I was so moved by this film and. You know, we, br we brought up the subject matter and how timely the subject matter was, and we can certainly get into that. But um, really, even more than the specific subject matter, I was just so blown away by the heart in this movie. And uh, I find it to be a really ennobling movie and a movie that really um, encourages love and understanding. And like, I mean, I feel... This is going to sound cheesy, but I feel honored to have watched this movie. So thank you to all of you for, for creating this movie. Um, and I guess I'd love to start out by, by hearing about, um, hearing about the, how the script came about and, you know, what, what, sort of what came first, the chicken or the egg, as far as that mood, that mood of, of, uh, you know, understanding and I'll use the love word, and love and, and all those things that the God, the world needs right now. So anybody can jump in and talk about that. So when Helen, the writer, actually pitched me the idea originally, it was, um, it was supposed to be a play set in a shipping container. And it's about a true story wow. which happened in England where it was really unfortunate. These um, refugees were trapped and, and a few of them died and they were found at Tilbury Dock. So they were literally banging on the side of a container. So it was this really harrowing true story. And I thought, well, that sounds more like a contained kind of micro budget film than, it, than a play. And then it kind of evolved, obviously, we introduced all the different characters and then it just became the whole story of a refugee and a journey. And obviously it became the film which it is now. Wow, wow. Um, and I guess for the three actors, um, I I, I, I've said what what immediately struck me about the about the the movie itself. I wonder what struck you immediately about the about the script. Was it the story? Was it your characters? Was it a tone? Was it the language? What was uh, what? Do you remember the specific moment where you said, "Oh my God, I have to do this. I have to do this film." Um, any of those questions? And anyone what? can do that. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be free flowing. <laughs> I did it. I did it for the cash. <laughs> <laughs> but I know you haven't been working much recently, and you probably needed to pay some bills. Uh, no, uh, listen. I, I, uh, I'm, a, I'm an advocate for refugees worldwide, and uh, and the cause. And um, I read Helen's script and I just was touched by how without ego and without uh direction it was in terms of you know I mean this is purely an audience's trip and um and it's about performance and connection and revelation and I just I loved the simplicity of it of Helen's writing and it just, it's just full of heart and soul without sounding cheesy. I, I mean, it's hard to talk about this movie without being cheesy. It's such a, it's such a big hearted, full hearted movie. And people that have read my writing know that I've had people joke with me before. When I, when you use the word big hearted, I know you're really enthusiastic about it. How about, how about you gentlemen, how, either, either or both of you about, uh, about discovering the script? Well, I mean, Upon first reading it, my immediate reaction was kind of a no, to be honest. Um, dealing with such subject matter on film, I thought, you know, I, yeah, it's not really the territory I want to be exploring at the time. Da, 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 and my agent sort of gave me a strong insistence. And upon <laughs> reading it again, as Lily was saying, the tenderness, the humanity, um, the sort of lack of sort of beating down on the heads of anyone really, but just the open observation of the state of affairs that we lived in then, which not much has changed since. Um, you know, the opening of the film is sort of talking about 70 million people in this exodus. That's no small number. Um, 
but you know, sort of again on that second reading, it was like, oh wow, a refugee hero, fantastic. How about that? And yeah, very happy I didn't stick with the no. I, I guess it says at the beginning of the film, great, greater than the combined populations of the UK and Ireland, um, the, the total number, which is, man, talk, talk, talk about a way to get, get people's attention and, and set an agenda at the beginning of the film for what a, what a serious thing we're addressing, you know, great. Um, Anthony, you look like you had something you want to say about that. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, um, it, it, it's, it's really interesting because in England we have the channel and it provides a lot of ignorance, actually, that small bit of water kind of Europe took on most of the refugee crisis. And, and you know, we did take a few people on, but compared to places like Turkey and Germany. So few, so few. So few, exactly. Shameful. And it's, and it's just incredible how much ignorance our channel buys us. It's, it's, it's amazing. It kind of almost protects people from knowing the truth, you know? Yeah, yeah. Peter, uh, your, your turn to talk about finding the script. I think you might be on mute. Am I still on mute? No, no, no you're good. I hear you. uh, am I good? Yeah. Um, well, similarly, yeah, I got the script and just, um, yeah, I loved it. The fact that it, it did provide sort of a different point of view. I mean, I was quite ignorant to all this, you know, sort of to my shame. I didn't really know. So much. I mean, it, it was there sort of in the new cycle, but it wasn't the big thing. So when, you know, when you read it, when I read the script and particularly sort of researching it as well, just watching those documentaries that Anthony sort of recommended, you do, you just build that empathy towards these people, which you don't get, you know, we don't get that in the media. We sort of see what's happening. But I thought, like you said, Michael, you know, I thought it really provided that love. You know, you connect with these people, you empathize. And I thought that was just so powerful. And it was not what was being done at the time. And it still isn't really, is it? I mean, no, you know, you, we don't, we don't see the, the side, the, the, the refugee side of the story. And I thought to do that in such a sort of loving, uh, non-judgmental way was just, yeah, a really sort of powerful thing to do. Yeah, that, that's the reason we called it the flood because there was a lot of these kind of collective derogatory nouns going around like the swarm and the flood. And we really wanted to take that away from the media and actually give these people names and faces and say, look, here's one person's story, but obviously he represents the greater story and I feel like you can connect more more to that on that human level yeah 100% 100% well Anthony I want to talk to you a little bit about um about pacing and tone uh it, it's interesting I was talking to a friend I have a friend Michelle Miller who is working with the festival she's editing our literary magazine that we're producing or, or uh, criticism magazine that we're producing called filmcritic.co and uh I was halfway through this film and I said to her, this, this film has Michelle Miller written all over it because she's done a lot of writing around refugee communities. Mm -hmm. And she also is one of the most big hearted people I know. And I'm like, yeah, I said, she said, what, what is it? And I said, well, it's kind of a human rights thriller, if that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> a human rights thriller and somehow both sides of it completely work. Of course, it's also an incredibly emotional story about a, a few individuals, you know? Um, yeah. So you got a lot going on there as far as tone, and specifically you have a genre, the whole thriller piece, that slow pacing, which I say very approvingly, slow mm. pacing usually kills anything that's a thriller, and yeah, yeah. it did not with you. You were able to pace things mm. at, at, at this very lifelike pace, and yet keep that tension up high. Tell me about finding that balance. So, so it's really interesting because the journey of a refugee is quite fast until you get to Calais. And then as soon as you get to Calais, you get kind of trapped in this, this sort of place where dreams come to die. And it's almost like a festival on the last day, you know, with people living in tents and it's raining, and it's muddy. And, and they've been living there for you know six months, every night trying to find an opportunity to get into England. And it's, it's a really tough place mentally and, and physically for people to exist in. And, and they say like the waiting can really destroy like, you know, everything in, inside you, all your hopes and dreams. And um, I feel like we try to keep a bit of that in there because, you know, if it's not waiting to hear if your uh, application has been approved for asylum, you know, you're waiting to see if you can get on the back of a lorry or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, and, you know, I, I think it's a really, this, this sort of in-between space, this sort of, uh, you know, I'm on my way to freedom, but I'm not in freedom yet, uh, is certainly, I think, very parallel to uh, Lena's character and where she is psychologically and emotionally. Um, that she's in that weird in-between place, uh, and that's a, that's a, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful parallel. And so I'm going to ask this question first of Lena, but I want everybody to to comment on it as you as you wish. Um, I, I've been told often by people that uh, that have made really tense, really emotional movies, and especially people whose characters, Lena, well, all all of you are going through very tense emotional. Um, uh, ordeals that that those tend to be the sets that are the most jokey the most fun the most emotionally supportive because you have to have it that way because when the camera's rolling you're in such a dark place that you have to find some light outside i've heard other people say no that pulls me out of it i need to stay intense you know and i'm wondering how the three of y'all like to work and then how it worked this time does that question make sense yeah um, well, Anthony runs a very brutal set. Uh, <laughs> he seems like iron, a screwdriver. driver. Iron fist. You can't speak. It's terrible. Um, no, I, I... This is the way I love to work um, as an actor, with a small, intimate crew that is there for the same purpose and they will believe in what you're making. And that was absolutely what across the board was felt in the making of this film. Uh, and I think we were all just very focused. We didn't have a huge amount of time. I think ev everyone worked with such mutual respect. And, um, you know, we had a giggle. We had Terry Bamber, who was our first AD, uh, who liked to crack the jokes, um, the dad jokes. And um, we just, you know, we, we kind of, we settled down when it was time, but we, you know, I spent most of my time trying not to cry when I was working with Ivano uh, <laughs> and Manzip. But um, yeah, it was a really beautiful, magical, intimate filmmaking experience across the board. Wonderful. Wonderful. How about the other two of you? Yeah, same. I mean, I, I thought, um, it does tend to happen, like you said, Mike, uh, that, you know, when you do our work on something that's so harrowing, the subject matter, you do look for that, you know, the light relief on set, but we had a great time. And I, I actually, looking back on it, it was a good laugh. This, this was like a job that was just a really good laugh. But yeah, that was, it wasn't, I, I found out, sort of, Mandip's not here, but we just, yeah, we were all sort of friends afterwards and it just, I remember being quite a fun shoot, despite the fact that we had to go through all those really harrowing scenes, particularly on the, on the lorry and all that, but yeah. And that is the way I like to work, actually, yeah. Just it's, if it's free and fun, sometimes, you know, you can go to those dark places. You just, you just sort of set, you know, the sets of that place. You, you, can, you feel you can go there, but... Uh, Pete, yeah. can I just say you're brilliant? So not that we've said hello yet. Oh, thank you, Lena. But um, beautiful work. Thank you so much. I second that. <laughs> hey, whoa, whoa, yeah. Ivana, you, bro? Yeah. yeah, thirded, thirded. Um, it, yeah, I loved your work, Peter, man. But I do have to insist, we're not friends, bro. You know. We should be <laughs> no, no, come on. Yeah, yeah. This is why I'm here. Stop calling me. Requests. Ivana, I'm glad that you gave Peter his props, but what I was actually asking was, what about you with the way you like to work with intense material? <laughs> um, it, was, it, it, it was a very physical shoot um, and a very emotional shoot. Quite often there were times when the artifice fell away and the reality of the situation showed itself. I think um, uh, Luke and... Anthony and everyone else, they sort of compiled a team of intelligent, sensitive people who were fantastic at their job. They're all specialists. So I think on set, we got a lot of it for free, that everyone kind of knew the situation and the circumstances and what we were then offering to the table with this work. Um, so there was respect, there was time, there was space. 
I don't think we even really needed many takes, did we? Did we, Hans? Did we? <laughs> and even if we did, I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Nice. The location, nice. the art team, I mean, we built our own replica jungle in um, sort of sunny. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. But, um, but, you know, and, and to spec. So all of it kind of was natural. Fantastic and the best kind of way to work, really. Well, I know Lena mentioned that she's done work with refugee causes. And uh, Lena, I'd love to hear more about that and hear about uh, where people that are watching this that have seen this movie and want to help can go. And then yeah. from the rest of you, I'd love to hear what, if any, your experience has been with this issue or did you come to it kind of fresh and you learned from doing the movie or sort of what your experience in that area is. So Lena, why don't you lead us off and then everybody else can jump in. Uh, uh, well, I, I'd i been, prior to meeting Luke and Anthony and Helen, I'd been to um, some camps, some refugee camps in Greece. Uh, and was just moved by how vast this is and how little conversation and focus it has. Um, and I think there's this, you know, this sort of terrible thing happening in our world where there's this sort of self-imposed hierarchy, which I don't quite understand. Um, and I, you know, I'm a great believer in it's, it's sort of, geographical luck as to what happens to us and um you know as we as the, the sort of global where we are now politically you know in the uk in the us it's terrifying what looks like could happen you know were the orange turd to get another term where things are heading uh you know, I just, sorry, I'm rambling. But yes, I've had experience. I continue to have experiences. There are tons of brilliant um, places where you can donate. Uh, and they're really doing good stuff like Choose Love, Team Humanity, the International Rescue Committee, all kind of share the love and pass it on to NGOs who are doing great work and supporting these people in, you know, relearning and infrastructure in you know mental health there are so many issues and there's a long-term solution that will be found that's an easy find it's just getting people to keep talking about it yeah. and it can't be forgotten because it's going to impact everybody in every conceivable way which i think is the short-sightedness of this whole thing you know like yeah, you have said, a tendency to get really on fire for an issue for about a week and then yeah, yeah exactly years. but like Anne said you know this this sort of channel that separates us in Europe going oh they're fine this is fine nothing's happening it's happening every day people are arriving every day people are dying every day women are getting raped every day children are being trafficked every day because of this and it's all of our responsibility that's just how I feel amen amen all right, gentlemen. Good luck living up to that answer. But who'd like to who'd like to tackle <laughs> tackle that question as well? My rambling answer. <laughs> well, no, I'm, say, like, so go, go on, go on. Please, please. I mean, we're friends. <laughs> I was kind of ignorant. You know, I didn't, you know, I didn't know so much about it. Not like you know, unlike Lena, I wasn't in all these, you know, these organizations. Since then, I have joined the Human Rights Watch, and I do bang the drum. But that was, you know, I was. So one of those people, like the, the vast majority of people, you just feel kind of helpless because the situation does seem so hopeless. You know, it's like, what is the solution to this? Yeah. And what's kind of clever is that the film, you know, it doesn't come up with a solution, but it's saying, we've got to talk about it because whatever we're doing right now isn't working. And like Lena said, you know, you just sort of need to look, if you just Google it now, the situation is getting worse and worse and it's not going anywhere. It's just going to get, it's getting worse. And you know, with the whole climate change and, uh, you know, how, you know, the world's moving towards populism, there's going to be more refugees, you know, looking for safe places to live. And 
you have to find a, a, a there's no option here you know it's like you have and to sorry peter the, and to contribute they don't just want it they want to contribute when you sit and speak to mm. people oh yes yeah I'm, they're they're skilled and ready and they need a hand to take them to where they want to be sorry yeah it's true exactly yeah i mean that's that's kind of what all of the characters represent the refugees represent you know, my character as well these are educated people coming fleeing whatever and now they're stuck and yeah it's it's a really scary situation but yeah like i said it's it's about opening up that dialogue you need to talk about it Where, wherever you stand on the issue yeah. it, it you know there has to be a solution mm. how about any or all of the other three of you um i mean just to give you a massive thank you um portland Northwest, for actually showing this yes can do so Thanks. that's our whole target that's the whole thing and the whole way that we can exorcise this channel separation of the mind. We're being bombarded by media and popcorn stuff, and I guess to a certain extent, being distracted from ourselves, from what's going on with our fellow people. And it's easier and easier to look at the numbers and, and you know, sit back and be like, what, what, what can I, me one, contribute? It's purely the conversation. Um, I mean, at the time, I think in Calais, when a lot of stuff was going on, um, jungle with the Jungle Mark One, me and um, my immediate circle of friends, I mean, I, not myself, but my immediate circle of friends, were going off in cars, trucks, and doing their little bit, um, catching a ferry and going over to the jungle to try and help however they could. Now, of late, I've noticed that my immediate circles and the people I run with, the people I work with, the people I know, aren't necessarily the wider world. And in terms of representation and giving, this, giving these people who are, I guess, pigeonholed in uh, derogatory nouns um, and far enough away from us, us and our reality to not empathize or do anything about um, sorry, I'm losing my friend, I'm feeling a bit emotional, but like, it's, it's that, it's the conversation, it's opening up and we've seen that turning a blind eye gets us to a terrible, terrible place where we're, where we're, 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 not, we're not at the wheel. It can go off in any, any direction and that's where we're headed. It is the conversation and yeah, just deeply thank you for sharing this and it meant a lot to me doing it. I felt like I was speaking for not only people in my family who have made a long, old journey, but those who will make these journeys and have made these journeys, those who haven't made it. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a pro-life film. They would call it what it is. And um, I think for you to show it in Portland now, it's never been more important. And thank you very much for that. Yeah, I was saying earlier, but it, uh, making a film with such an important subject matter it has this huge weight on everyone involved. And um, there was a real respect uh, and an understanding uh, within the crew and the cast. And I hope that, that really came across on the, in the film, in the final film. Luke, you want to you wanna jump in there? Uh, I mean, I, I concur totally. I think just to sort of drill down a little bit more, it, it, it's not so much about having a conversation with somebody at work about refugees or memory in your family, but, but digging that, I mean, great, please, please do that. But it's, it's being brave enough to not know the answer and not be comfortable and be all right with not be, you know, being uncomfortable with your answer or whatever. Because I think probably this collective and, and arguably some of the people that might be drawn to this film, if they read about it, may well be kind of, on side, um, but that, that's not the case with everybody. And it's it's taking those steps towards that dialogue, you know, whether it's yes, being brave enough to jump straight in and talk about the, the refugee situation in the world, in your country and our, you know, wherever, but also just, you know, edging towards those, those uncomfortable conversations um, and being all right with not knowing the answer or changing your mind, even better, changing your mind, because that's what we really, really want you know and 
because it's 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 not complicated for this collective people here and possibly for people who won't have seen it now but for a lot of people it's really complicated and it goes deep into their marrow and and that's that's good that's okay be okay with that be okay with that discomfort and go <laughs> Beautiful. Lena, did you have, did you want to add something in? Looked like you wanted to say something. No, I was just, Ivano made me cry, that was all. <laughs> I'm barely holding Again. it. Again. <laughs> okay. Um, well, uh, before I get to uh, sorry, one more question. So uh, just to further on, yeah. on, but also the highly, this charming, intelligent, committed, um, loving character, um, isn't necessarily highly, he's just, he's a symbol of the masses. It's her story, it's his story, it's families, it's uh, professors, it's doctors, it's people in a state of affairs through negligence who have gotten to a point of not being able to live where they were born. It's not choice. I mean, not to say that, you know, some people, yeah, varying degrees of, yeah, I'm not going to be good, sure comparing trauma in any kind of way, but yeah, that that he's it's, these are merely representative. Wendy, people on the front line, having to face every day, ignore the humanity there just to tick these boxes. This, this is the human collateral of that, and I think until we sort of focus more on the source and and, and the root of the problem, we're going to carry on doing these coping mechanisms. And, yeah. But no. Amen. Amen. Well, before I get to one last question that's a little more lighthearted, <laughs> I just want to say up to all five of you, I, I love you and thank you for, thank you for, I love this film and I love each one of you and thank you for bringing a film of such love to us. And like I said at the top, I, I, I just feel honored to have watched this film. So, uh, and, and certainly beyond Portland in my, in my capacity as the editor at large of Paste Magazine, once you get into distribution, Obviously, let me know, and we'll do anything we can from the pace. It's out there, man. Sa uh, Samuel okay. Goldman already distributed. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, oh, it's, great. it's in your country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, let's hop on. Let's hop on the email. Let's paste figure away. Out what we can do as well. <laughs> um, so my lighthearted question is, you know, this we're we're doing this this uh, this is not a live Q and A as far as the audience, so I'm not able to throw it to the audience for questions. Uh, but and I wanted the we've talked now for half an hour. I wanted almost all the conversation to be about the movie, but Lena, of course, someone was going to ask a Game of Thrones question. So if you'll allow me to ask you one, I'm going to preface it by telling you a little story. At Sunday, okay. year, my hair was about as long as yours, and my beard was about three times this long. And uh, on my way down Main Street, I hear this loud, booming voice say, my beard brother. And I turn around, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. Let's see. Let's see if I can make it so you can see it. I get it's a bear's face. <laughs> <laughs> we can just see your bear from behind you. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I'm not going to be able to. Uh, uh. Ooh. Oh, there oh. you go. Someone. That's okay. me and Christopher Hinju yes. uh, take, doing what he called a beard mash. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and so when I, was, when I was telling people about having this having this wonderful, and then we ended up, ended up doing an interview. We hung out. We were like, you know, we're like, fast buddies of course and i and so when i told people this story i ended up asking them okay of all the game of thrones characters not the actors of all the game of thrones characters what character would have been the most fun to hang out with because to me there's no question it's torment right and so then i would show them the picture and i would say i got to hang out with you know christopher um so my question for you is it's actually a two-part question which character on Game of Thrones, would you personally have most liked to hang out with? And then that's a fun one. But then a real one is who 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 in the cast did you especially have a lot of fun with? The actors. Who did you who did you really respond to and buddied up with? And when you're having a bad day, you knew you could go to them to make you feel better. Uh, I well, I um, it's kind of the same answer, really. I I think I would have hung out with uh, Tyrion just because he drank and uh liked a good time um and my you know before i was sort of stuck by myself in belfast for three years um i did work with pete dinklage 
Okay, my daughter's just come in singing. It's recess. <laughs> we're, we're on Zoom school. Yes. Can I tell you something? You can. Do you want to say hi? Uh, Hello. <laughs> hi, Ted. Say hi, everybody. God, you're grown, man. Wow. What a smile she has. She's big now. Um, and then Conleth and Pete and Charles and um, Jack uh -huh. Leeson, who played Joffrey. We just, we just, I was saying the other day. One sec, one sec. There's a hairy something. Um, we would just Michael. laugh. And... <laughs> it's a game. <laughs> it's a game. And, uh, and try not to fall down the stairs oh. in our slippery shoes. <laughs> okay, I, I think I did well keeping them at the floodgates yeah. for that long. You did. You did. You're, you're, you're <laughs> just on the one <laughs> um, Does anybody else have something funny that they want to throw in before we uh, before we wrap here? I'm, I'd love to hear anything anything lighthearted that, or it doesn't have to be lighthearted. Is there anything we didn't cover that you wanted to make sure that we talked about? <laughs> okay. Um, so no. <laughs> I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna mute us. <laughs> All right. I, mean, I would actually just sorry, Michael. I just would say it's not no. lighthearted, but I would say, um, yeah, you know, I say this all the time. You know, nobody was. I, I, I know everybody got the joke that Liam was making, but nobody was. Everybody did this job for love. Nobody did this for for anything other than than love of, of the of the of the piece and of the project. And uh, I just, you know, it was a, a, a very powerful and humbling experience to see particularly as the shoot dragged on because it got hard you know and uh low budget filming i mean filming generally but low budget filming particularly you know and uh, uh ivana particularly uh but everybody uh, getting out of cars um and doing it turning up at uh impromptu sets and turning out amazing performances um was, and, and, and people building sets and putting up lights and whatever uh, was it was just it was very very powerful and, and it felt like uh, it was a real um, underscoring of everybody's support and belief in the power of making art about complicated and conflicting subjects. Yeah. I'd like to add you know without making it preachy or overtly political you know it's important that you can engage with everyone on both sides of the argument because like Lou said earlier you know they're the people whose minds you have to change so it's nothing worse than hitting them overhead with a you know an ideology or whatever um i yeah, I, yeah. like I've the old one saying goes if you want to send a message run a billboard right yeah <laughs> <laughs> Ivana, go ahead um i i i i've just remembered that i got a live heckle when we were in Calais, yeah. like oh. uh, you notice in the film, there's a little moment where like a, a lorry driver drives past and was sort of like, oh, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. That tells you to go back home or something like that, right? No, he was beeping. He was oh, like properly like, honking his horn. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like go away. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we kept it in the film, actually. I think. <laughs> Someone at least doing. <laughs> All right. Well. I love all of you. I love the film. We'll be talking again soon. Let's get you some press and uh, Godspeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very so much. much. Ciao, ciao. Cheers. Bye, bye, bye. bye.